It's going to say REC for record, not wreck it, but record. And we're just we're going to film. Okay. I'm I'm filming this class every day and my second period class every single day. And whichever class goes better will be the ones that are posted out there for the world to see. Don't worry. Everybody looks really good. Everyone is really smart and ready to be in this class. Caitlin, it's totally, totally okay. Is everybody all right? Some of you are like smiling really big, which is either the like I'm really excited or I'm about to throw up and I'm trying to like hold it in. Some of you look completely overwhelmed already, and we haven't done any math yet. So if you guys could take out your agenda, uh, we're going to get rockin' and rollin'. Okay, and we're filming? Ivan, we're good. All right, we're going to film every single day. It's going to get to the point where you're going to forget that there is a camera in the room. Right now, probably everybody is super aware of the camera. I know, because whenever I stand here, I like I either like have to block or I have to like suck in the gut because the camera adds 10 pounds and I don't need it anymore. <laughs> All right, so things that you need to know. Ivan's with me. I appreciate that. Um, I don't think I've said it yet. My name is Mr. DeRosier. I think most of you know me. I will figure out all of your names by the end of the week, I promise. You can call me Mr. DeRosier. You can call me Mr. D. If stress levels get really high and you're like, Dad! I will probably respond to that as well. It's okay to laugh, especially at the good ones. Um, we are going to do a lot of math every single day. Every single day. How many of your teachers so far have like read the syllabus to you and gone over all of the rules and expectations? All of them. One of them. You probably get here late. Yeah. Okay. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. Um, there is a syllabus. You have it. It's over here. It is hopefully very readable. It goes over all the expectations placed upon you as an AP calculus student. Congratulations. So what I need you to do is between now and Wednesday, read through this and sign the back on the bottom of page six. Now I know it says that there's like room for mom and dad to sign it. Quite honestly, you are all more than old enough. As a parent of two now, I'm not going to have time to read through all of the syllabi. I'm in just sign the bottom of the page mode as the girls are running out the door. Okay. So as long as you read it and you understand the things that are in there, we're totally going to be okay. Everybody good? Okay, important things that are in the syllabus that I need you to know, though, is that number one, your graphing calculator needs to come with you every single day. And I know from watching Mr. Link in action with you guys last year, everybody has a graphing calculator? Everybody has a TI Inspire graphing calculator? Okay. It has to be here tomorrow. So in your agenda, please make sure that you write a note that your graphing calculator, wherever it may have spent its summer, needs to be coming to class every single day. Tomorrow, you're also turning into me your summer assignment. Round one and round two. You're like, oh my god, thank god it's not actually due today. <laughs> I'm being kind to you. I'm being kind to me. Round one and round two are due tomorrow. Round three, which has everything to do with limits, is due Wednesday. This is the only extension you're going to get. If you could all could, if y'all could stop the, oh my god, oh thank god, oh thank god, because right now I'm thinking, oh they didn't do it. Oh, we need some whoopings. Okay. I will be available today during lunch for all of you that are like panicked and needed a little bit of help, stop by. I should be available tomorrow during lunch if you need a little bit of help, stop by. That's about all I can guarantee. All right, we've done that. Summer assignment, unit packet. Yes, this labor of love. All 67 pages. Hold on one second, I haven't even said good stuff yet. Okay. This is what comes to class every single day. This is everything for the first unit. When's the first test? Monday, October 21. 
What? Are you just making updates? You mean Tuesday, September 12th? Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday, September 12th, at the bottom of the calendar, is where you're going to have the first unit test. Every unit, there's like a new unit packet. I tried this last year for the first time. It worked so well with the calculus students. No one, I, no lie here, no one ever lost their packet. Ever. Don't be the first one. Yes? What did you say was due Wednesday? What's going to be due Wednesday is part three of the summer assignment. Thanks for being there for me. All right, we're going to be filming every single day. It is totally okay. We're not going to worry about it. Okay? Just because calculus students from all over the country and all over Yes Prep are going to be watching the video, you might get your prom date this way. There were promposals done last year over video. It was very interesting to watch someone get shot down over a video camera. It was amazing. Yeah, it was like way fun. Um, okay, so let's get rock and roll. We're going to do math. We're going to do math every single day because this is what I love most. If God came down right now and said I could have any job on the planet, I would say thank you. I already have the best job. Yes, ma'am. That should go in your binder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. You guys are going to do this completely on your own. This is not for grades. So I don't want anybody to freak out. I know it's the first day back from summer. There are cobwebs in your brains. There are 14 numbers up here that all need to get placed on a number line. Remember, small numbers over this way, bigger numbers over this way, please. Take two minutes completely on your own. Some of these are going to be way easy. Completely on your own. You can play with your hair later. Put in all 14. It's on page 4. Abraham. And Juan. Uh, Delia. Here. Eric Bravo. Here. Kevin Cruz. Kevin. Roberto Figueroa. Here. Roberto. Pedro Hoyos. Here. Did I say that correctly? Hoyos? Yes. Okay. Ivan Giovanna. Giovanna. Thank you, by the way. Okay. Kaylin McRae. Okay, and I have two Kalins in my life. Yeah. Jacqueline Minjabar. Ingrid's younger sister. All right. Evelyn Mora. Evelyn. Carlos Morales. Carlos. Jose Munoz. Okay. Mayim Reyes is absent today. And Ashley Mia. Ashley. Okay, that's everybody. All 14 numbers on the number line, please. Start with the ones you're comfortable with. <laughs> good news. Everyone seems to have put zero in a good place. There are some of these that are meant to be a little mean. Do the best that you can. If you put 0, 1, 3, and 4 in the wrong place, I reserve the right to laugh at you and call you out on camera. Stuff there. 
A lot of people seem to be avoiding square root of 2 over 2. <laughs> okay, for all the folks that are avoiding square root of 2 over 2, what do we know about the square root of 2? This is 0. Where, square root of 2 lives between what two whole zero numbers? And one. Just the square root of 2. 0 and 1? 1 and 2. 1 and 2. One and two. Well, the square root of 2 should live somewhere between 1 and 2, right? Because the square root of 1 is 1 and the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 2 is somewhere between 1 and 2. So how about square root of 2 divided by 2? It's somewhere between 1 half and 1. Specifically, it's 0 0.7071, but now I'm just showing off for the camera. All right, so let's see how well we did. In last class out of 29, two people got them right, or two people said they got them all right. One of them was Paul, one of them was Roberto. I think they could both be lying. Who knows? All right, so if all goes well, the very first number that you have on your number line to the far left is negative 4.001. I hope everybody's okay with that. Really close to negative 4. Then negative 3.99999999. How close is negative 3.99999 to negative 4? Like, way close. Creepy close. Right? So close. You're like, get away from me close. But there's still a whole bunch of numbers in between negative 4 and negative 3.999. Followed next by negative 3.2. Then negative pi. Because what do we remember about pi? It's been a while. It's 3.14 and some stuff. So negative pi is between negative 3 and negative 3.2. Okay. Zero, and then we just discussed square root of 2 over 2, followed by 1, 1.4. Square root of 2 is a little bit more than 1.4. E is 2.718, 3, and then 4. How many of you guys got all those in the right place? Okay, which one did you miss? The E. Anybody else miss E? Okay, you probably were not using it in your working vocabulary this summer. Right, you weren't hanging out at the pool being like, hey, which one's bigger again? Two or three? Or is it E? I don't remember. Those were not part of your conversations. I also am going to assume that not in your conversation this summer was limits. This whole first unit, I love teaching this first unit, is all about limits. Now, there were limits in the summer assignment that you did this summer. That's in round three, that's what's due on Wednesday. So I wanted to have two days to like review and clear off the cobwebs before you turn that one out. Limits was the very last thing you guys studied with Mr. Link and probably maybe a little bit rusty. So what I need you to do, I want you to take two minutes here. There are three different kinds of limits. These first two are called one-sided limits. So if you could just add this into your notes, they're called one-sided limits. One-sided limits because we're only talking about the limit from one side. One-sided limits. This guy down here is called the two-sided limit. Okay, what I want you to do is take two minutes, and then I'm going to pull you back together. You see what the math notation is. What I want to hear you actually repeating to folks near you, how would you actually read that out loud? And then, what does it mean? Focus on the notation. How would you read it out loud? And then what does it mean? And then we're going to do some work. Okay? Two minutes. Just let's get the vocabulary going. Okay, the, the remember how to do it is coming. Right now I want to make sure the words are coming out of your mouth correctly and that we're paying attention to things like the difference between the little plus sign coming after the C and the little minus sign. I mean, that's part of it. That's part of it. But it also means something. It's telling you what side 
you're coming from. So if you see the little plus sign, yeah, but if you see the little plus sign, are you coming from the right or the left? Right. You're coming from the right if you see the plus sign. If you see the minus sign, obviously it's coming from the left. And if there is no sign, then it's both at the same time. You have to consider both. And those are the ones that get a little bit more confusing. All right, let me hear you guys just read about one more time here. Friends over here. Excellent, you're frozen. So, how about another one? Well done, and friend over here. Excellent, and just any of these, no matter what. Any one of those. Perfect, thank you very much. All right, so I think everybody's had a chance to like practice saying the words, getting them out of the mouth again. Um, I also had some folks, I just heard a conversation which was, okay, great, I know how to say it. Now, what else? What else is there? I don't remember all the other things. Well, that's where we're going to go from here. So if I can get you guys all up on your feet, I love to get you guys up on your feet and moving. You're going to get so comfortable with this. You might get a little bit sweaty. It's okay. I even think about moving sometimes, and I start to get sweaty. All right, we're gonna we're gonna call this power teaching. You're gonna stretch. You're gonna move. I'm gonna model it the first time through. No one needs to be embarrassed on camera except for me right now. Okay, for a limit to exist, the limit from the wait for you guys. Your left is which one? Okay. In order for a limit to exist, the limit from the left and the limit from the right have to be equal to each other. I'm going to link my fingers together to show the equality. A hole in the graph is okay, but jumps and breaks are not. Okay, on the count of three, we're all going to do it together. Ready? One, two, and the words are up here. One, two, three. For a limit to exist, the limit from the left and the limit from the right Link them together. They must be equal to each other. Uh, last class, somebody said, what do you mean by a break? I mean like you have like a graph, and then there is no graph, and then there is more of a graph after that. That would be like a break. There's like missing domain values in between. Okay? So one more time, find somebody really good looking near you, and go over the limit one more time. <laughs> I'll leave the words up there. Alright, way to go. Alright, everybody back to you. Don't sit down yet. Whoop. Caleb, it's okay. It's okay, I get you. One more that I want to do together. Okay, this is about um, infinity. The College Board, I, I, like, I, I love reading calculus books, and some calculus books say one thing, other calculus books say another. What the College Board says, that wins. Because they're the folks that write the AP exam that you are going to be taking 274 days from now. So what they say wins. So what I need you to know is that limits can approach positive infinity, and they can approach negative infinity. The College Board wants us to say that these limits do not exist because of unbounded behavior. So if you see a graph like increasing really steeply, like you went around, what the fancy word for that? You see the graph like increasing really steeply, heading off towards infinity. Normally, you do like like the little, uh, little dotted line there to indicate that something special is happening on the graph. An asymptote. What flavor of asymptote? Because there's this kind of asymptote and there's this kind. We're talking about vertical asymptotes. It's been a while. More words that have not come out of your mouth in two months. So limits can approach positive infinity or they can approach negative infinity. The College Board wants us to say these limits do not exist because of unbounded behavior. Okay, count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Limits can approach positive infinity or negative infinity. The college board wants us to say that these limits do not exist because of unbounded behavior. Stretch yourself, it's good for you. Alright, everybody have seat, please. 
You guys are doing well so far. Stay with me. It's all, we're all going to make it. Just hold on. All right. Oh, so awkward. I already wrote all over this and I didn't mean to. Shame. No, no, I'm having a Game of Thrones moment here. Shame. Okay. I looked at the top of page five. Top of page five. We're going to do these first two together, make sure that we're on the same page. I'm just going to ask for different people to volunteer to read it out loud. It's okay if you get it wrong. I either get volunteers or I go for victims. Oh, I love it. Jackie, can you read the first one? F of 3. So based on this graph, what's F of 3? What's F of 3? 3. 3. 3. Look at the graph. Negative 2. Isn't it like undefined or something? And now here's the thing. We've just been having conversations about limits. This is not a limit question. This is a question of when I look at the graph, if I look at where x equals 3, what's the y value there? So look at the graph. It's not 0. Look closely at the graph. It's negative 2. Kaylin, why is it negative 2? Do you guys see the little dot down here? Okay. F of 3 is equal to negative 2. It's not a limit question. I'm just saying if I actually went over to x equals 3 and said, what's the y value, what's the y value? You got it? Okay. Um, Roberto, can you read the next one? Okay, love it. Limit of f of x as x approaches 3. Which side? Both. Both sides, right? Two sided limits. Look at the graph. If you get closer to x equals 3, you get closer, 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 what happens to those y values? What are they getting closer to? Negative. They're getting closer to 3, aren't they? Yeah. Do they ever get to be 3? No. No, they get close. This is the limit conversation. Check it from the left, though. Get closer, 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 closer to 3 from the left. What happens to those y values? Negative. They get closer to 3. So what's the limit as x approaches 3? Three. Everybody good? Yeah. Very different questions. Can you take your jewelry down a little bit? Almost there. There you go. Almost. You got it. All right. Next one. My friend up front in the green. I don't know your name yet. I'm sorry. Eric? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos. Carlos. How would you read this first one? Lim limit of f of x as x approaches negative 4. From which way? From the left. From the left. That negative sign says from the left. So look at the graph. Find where x equals negative 4. Here's x equals negative 4. What's the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left? What's the graph doing? Get close to negative 4 from the left. Increasing. We're increasing, right? Increasing towards? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. You're coming in from the left of negative 4. Increasing up towards positive infinity. Okay. Uh, can I get you to read this one? Limit of f of x as x approaches 4 with the end of that. Limit of f of x as x approaches 4. So find x equals 4. We're approaching from the left. What are we going to get everybody? We're going to go towards positive infinity? Yes. Okay. Ivan, how about this one? Limit of f of x as x approaches negative 4 from the right. From the right. So find x equals negative 4. Approach negative 4 from the right. What's that graph doing? Negative. Going down towards negative infinity. Good. And Delia? Delia, last one. Uh, limit of f of x as x approaches 4 from the right. Limit of f of x as x approaches 4 from the right. So find 4. Approach from the right. What are we doing? Positive infinity. Is everybody feeling 100% okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you were asked on the AP exam, what is the limit for any of these, what you'd say is does not exist or undefined, but why? Out of bounds. 
go, go back to your notes if you need to. Undefined because. You, so, Kaylin, what I hear you saying is they're not approaching the same thing, but these are all one-sided limits. All of these limits, you're going to say, does not exist because of unbounded behavior. If your limit's approaching infinity or down to negative infinity, does not exist because of unbounded behavior. All right, so enough of that. What I want to do is give you guys a little bit of time to practice. At the bottom here, this is the last thing we're going to do in class right now. There are 12 limit questions. They all are coming from this graph over here. You've got a graph, and you've got a piecewise function that tells you how the graph was made. So work out your tables. Do as many of these as you can. I don't think anyone's going to get through all 12. Do as many as you can, and we'll go from there. Yeah, the scale's a little hard to read. If you're not sure about reading the scale, the scale we're counting by ones. Yes, sir. Summer. So excited to have you back. He's going to get a lot of special attention from me. Huh? Yeah. Oh, you'll figure it out. How are we doing? Uh, when there's two points leading up to, there's just something with the X that it's approaching. How do you write that? Which one are we talking about? Or question three? Question number three. So the limit as x approaches zero, which side are we approaching from? Both sides. Both sides. So I'd ask you the first, what's the limit from the left? Four. What's the limit from the right? Zero. Zero. Are those equal to each other? No. And the limit does not exist. You write limit does not exist because four is not equal to zero. Or I'd say like because the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right. Okay. Okay. What would we get for the first one? Can I work with you? Like, one, and you talking about that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, how about limit x approaches 0 from the right? Zero. But what's the limit as x approaches 0? Why? I 100% agree. The limit does not exist. Why? Because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not equal to each other. It's because we wish I hear you. And so you would just say it does not exist, and that's the why. <laughs> All right, sad news, friends. We've got one minute. Okay, that's all we've got. But hey, we didn't spend 30 minutes going over the syllabus. Okay, walking around, I saw just about everybody. Limit as x approaches zero from the left is one. I think some folks had a difficult time reading the scale, and four was showing up for some crazy reason. It's going to be one. Limit as x approaches zero from the right. Zero, limit as x approaches zero, does not exist. Does not exist, and here's the because, because limit as x approaches zero from the left is not equal to limit as x approaches zero from the right. And if you made it past that, great. I want to make sure that those three are like good and locked in. We only had 30 minutes. I wasn't thinking we were going to get through a whole lesson. What I hope though is that we're clearing off some of the cobwebs. Trust your smarticle particles. Summer assignment, round one and round two are due when? Tomorrow. Round three is due when? Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm going to send you guys all an email later tonight, and I'm just going to say, let me know that you got it. I want to make sure that we're able to communicate by email. Okay. See you later. Have a great day. Thank you for coming.
Next time I see you, there are only 273 days left. And you can just turn it off. Actually, you just close the side panel.